Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a professional carpenter and remodeler. If you're looking for a budget-friendly fence option, a chain link fence is the way to go. I'll show you how to build it today. Before you get started, make sure you check your local building codes and regulations like we've done here. And be sure that your fence is within your property line. The last thing to remember is to call your local utility companies and have them lay out all of your underground lines. We'll start with layout using batter boards, string line, and stakes. We'll mark our fence layout around the yard, noting our post and gate locations. Our fence is running right up to the corner of the house. So that's where I put my stake and I'll tie my string line to it. To square our corners, we'll use the three, four, five method. Measure three feet down one string line and four feet along the adjacent string line. When you measure diagonally, it should be five feet. If it's not, just adjust your lines until it is. Next, we'll mark our terminal posts with stakes. Our terminal posts are gate, corner, and end posts. Okay. Thank you. Then we'll mark our batter boards and temporarily take off the strings to make it easier to dig. Now for the fun part. We have to start digging our post holes. Next to the house here, we're gonna dig it by hand using a post hole digger and a digging bar and a shovel. Because this is a terminal post, the hole will be a little wider and a little deeper than the line posts. For us, it's eight inches wide by 30 inches deep. Always check local codes for setting posts below the frost line. All right, 30 inches. If you have a lot of holes to dig, consider using a power auger like this one. Just let the weight of the machine do the work. Continue digging all your holes, making sure you dig to the proper depth. Now that the hard part is done and all of our holes are dug, we can start setting our terminal posts. You'll notice that these are larger in diameter than our line posts. We'll first measure for our ground level. Just be sure to account for the fabric and the hardware. Once you've marked that, we're gonna set it in a bed of dry concrete, and then we'll fill in around it with wet concrete. All right. Now we'll mix up our wet concrete and set our post. Once your concrete is around the consistency of cake batter, it's ready to go. And then we'll set our posts and attach our plumb line. And make sure that your line is level with the ground. Good. Somebody can hold the post plumb while the other one fills. Keep it a couple inches below ground level and slope it away from the post. All right, it's plumb. Now we can move on to the next post. Once our first post is in place, we can set our string line so the rest of them will be in line. Once that's set, we can continue setting our posts. For the line posts in between, check the manufacturer's directions for spacing and hole size. The post height will be the height of the fabric minus two inches. Use a string tied between the terminal posts to keep the height uniform. Set the line posts in the hole with concrete, just like with the other posts. Fast setting concrete can speed up the process. Just pour it in, plumb up the posts, then add water following the directions. Work out the air pockets if needed. Continue this process for the rest of the posts. then let the concrete cure. Next, we'll install our hardware on our terminal posts. For each post, you'll slip on a brace band. 
then tension bands flat side to the outside, and another brace band near the top with a rail cup, and finally the post cap. The number of tension bands you'll need is the height of the fence in feet minus one. So a four foot fence needs three bands. At the corner post, double up the hardware for each direction. At the top, alternate the cups of each brace band, one up and one down. On the line posts, add the offset post tops with the offset loop toward the outside. Then we'll just slide our top rail through the post top into the rail end cup and tighten the bolt. We'll just keep adding our top rails, sliding each rail over the narrow end of the previous rail. At the end, we'll mark the length of the last top rail and cut to fit. Then just tighten the end cup to secure the top rail. With the top rail set, add tension wire along the bottom. It should be about two inches off the ground and on the same side as the fabric. Now we'll install our fabric. We'll start by laying it out on the outside of our fence poles on the ground. First, we'll slide a tension bar through the first row of diamonds. Secure it to the terminal posts with the tension bands and carriage bolts. After that, we'll stand the fabric up against the post and pull out any excess slack. I'm going to attach a few wire ties to the top rail to help hold it in place. If you have to remove any excess fabric, loosen a strand and twist it out. To secure the other end, insert a tension bar about three feet from the end of the fabric. Temporarily add a tension band to the terminal post and hook a come along to it. Hook a stretcher bar to the tension bar and attach the come along to tighten the fabric. It's tight enough when you can squeeze it just a little bit. Once it's tight enough, again, remove the excess fabric. Now we'll pull the rest of the fabric to the terminal post and insert a tension bar through the fabric and tension bands. Then we'll just tighten our nuts and bolts and remove our come along, stretcher bar, and temporary tension band. Along the run, we'll attach the fabric to the posts with fence ties. For the posts, we'll go about every 12 inches. On the top rail, we can go every two feet. You can just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. Once you've done that, you can secure the fabric to the tension wire with wire clips. I use a little pair of pliers for this process. With the first section complete, you can move on to the other sections. The fabric should install pretty easily with only a few tools and maybe a helping hand. Just be sure you don't stretch it too tight. And don't skip on those wire ties and clips. They prevent pets from pushing out the bottom of the fence. You might have a section of fence that's longer than the chain link fabric rolls, like we have here. To attach another roll, you just twist in a single strand to connect the diamonds. When you bend the ends of the strand, the two pieces become one, and you can't even tell. Now that our fence fabric is in place, we can start installing all of our gates. First, we'll attach the gate hinges to the posts, about eight inches from the top and eight inches from the bottom. 
we'll secure them with our carriage bolts. The top pin should face down and the bottom pin up. Next, we'll loosely attach the frame hinges to the gate. We use a 2x4 to hold the gate above the ground. Adjust the bottom frame hinge to attach to the bottom post hinge and tighten. Then do the top hinge. To attach the latch, we held it at a comfortable height on the gate and just secured the bolts. If the gate doesn't swing freely, just adjust the hinges until it does. Now once you've double checked everything and tightened all your nuts and bolts, your chain link fence project is complete. Want more great ideas and how-tos? Go to lowes.com slash how-to.